we should be live and back i'm just gonna wait for everybody to get connected i know that there is a delay <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> All right, so today I am going to be talking about core watercolors and I shared these with you in my December art haul, which really was the only time that I got to, and I shared that in January, and that was the only time I got to connect with you guys in January. It has been it has been a, a month. I can't believe the first month is already past. Like, wow. All right. Gypsy Heart Craft says audio is live. Video is live. Thank you, Ashley. Ah, yeah. Another live stream. So I have been missing you guys. I'm missing you guys a lot. And hopefully I know this was an odd time. And hopefully people will trickle in. Hello to Tara Giblin. Oh, yeah. I don't even think Joseph, I, I messaged him, but I don't know if he got it. So I don't know if he'll be here, but that's okay. And today I may not be live as long as I normally am. But again, it's okay. We're just going to, we're just going to roll with it. We're going to talk about core watercolors today by Golden. And these here. I've already got them in a palette. But I just want to show you the tin. So this is what the tin looks like. Of course, it comes with a little information. And here's all the colors that are offered in the core line. So you can see that there. Lots of colors. Um, I'm not noticing, of course, right now, I mean, I am loving some granulating watercolors. Uh, slightly low audio for me, but it could also just be me. Okay, well, hopefully, let's try that. How's that? I don't know if that's any better. I hope it is. It was it was wanting to do that uh, the other day too, and I'm seeing that. I don't know. I'll just start. I'll just start yelling at you guys. I'll just start yelling it out. But I'm seeing that um, I've been really into granulating watercolors lately, and these uh, better. Okay, great. I just kind of moved it a little closer and i um, just about eating the microphone, which you guys would see, but I'm not going to be on screen today. Today is all about the, all about the whooshes and the water and the colors. And hopefully you guys will like it. I have a new angle of, for a camera and we're going to see how that is. Audio is good for me too. Okay, great. Thank you, Tara. So yeah, I've, I was saying granulating watercolors. I've been very into those lately. And uh, looking at these little swatches, I'm not seeing a lot that look really granulating. I don't know if some of you have poor watercolors and have used them, you'll have to let me know. Are these more <clears throat> transparent and beautiful and versus, you know, granulating and, I don't know, they each seem to have like, you know, all kinds of watercolors seem to have their own little unique qualities. And that's why we just need to have them all, right? So these are the small tubes, but this is what you get in the introductory set of 12. And I have linked everything, <coughs> excuse me, everything that you are going to see today will be linked in the description. So Definitely, if anything you see strikes your fancy and you want to check that out, links are below. And they are affiliate links, so just to put that out there, they are affiliate links, and while that does not cost you more, it absolutely does help the channel. And, you know, I appreciate you guys choosing to use them, so thank you. This here I showed you also in my haul is the Rinsewell water well and I just thought you know what let me just show it to you guys um before I put it together so you can see so the bottle has the hole in it here uh rinse well and this is again it's linked below by Masterson same people that do the stay wet pellet and you're just gonna take 
take the bottle, turn it right upside down into the well, and this will fill up. And then when you need clean water, you can just push the little plunger, it'll let the water out, clean water in. So I thought, you know what, just in case we need cleaner water, because hopefully we're gonna be doing lots of, lots of whooshes. So let me bring my palette over for just a second so I can show you right there, that row is the set of 12 that we're talking about today. And I have not, these are in the, these are in my same palette as my Daniel Smith watercolors, which I've, I have shown you before. Uh, I went ahead and sprayed these before the stream so that I could get them re-wet. Cause I did put, these were already in here. And I did have like the little, you know, tested what the colors would look like, but you know what, they're not on my swatch card. And I thought, well, why don't we swatch those together? So I'm going to go over the colors and then let's see what they can do. <clears throat> so, hello D, Diane, Sh D AKA Diane Schwer. Hello, thanks for joining me. Good to have you here today. So also I'm gonna swatch these colors out, but then let's talk about the paper we're gonna use. Um, we're going to test these on, I've got some of the B 100% cotton watercolor paper. I've heard a lot of people talk about this and say really nice things. Now this is only, <coughs> excuse me, this is a six by nine inch. There were 50 sheets in this, again, link below. This is only 90 pound and 200 GSM. And I gotta tell you, I was really curious if, um, how this is gonna hold up. But I've had to turn up the volume because the audio was low for me also. Okay, thanks hobby artist. Is it okay now? Hopefully it's okay now and I remember to speak up. If I don't, just let me know. I had to change a few things around on the computer and I think it's just not liking where this is connected because usually, I have to move it away from me because this mic tends to pick up really strong. So we'll just see how this goes. So I'm using the B watercolor and again, 90 pound, 200 GSM, which it's thinner than say your Arsh at 140 uh, pound, which again, is that's gonna be a 300 GSM. And but you know what? We're gonna try it out because I have been really looking forward to seeing what I think of that, because a lot of you have mentioned that you like it. And yeah, I wanna know, acquiring minds. So we're also going to use the, the Canson, I don't know if I can get this on here today. My camera's really low so I could get you guys nice and tight. So the Canson XL watercolor paper, which is a cellulose paper. Uh, audio's definitely better now, thank you. Okay, so cellulose paper, now this one is the 140 pound, 300 GSM and uh, cellulose. So will it react differently on cellulose than it does on cotton? That's what I wanted to know. So what I've got, um, I also grabbed my, of course, my silver black velvet brushes that I showed you in that haul in January from the month of December. And of course, again, December had my birthday, Christmas, my anniversary. So like everything for me happens in December. All right. So I grabbed those and I thought, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna use them. We're gonna try them out because I know I love, you guys know, you've seen me use my size six uh, round like all the time. That was the only brush I had. So of course I requested more for Christmas and I did get some. And I love, I love these brushes. Okay. Now let me just uh, mention, because I just saw <clears throat> hobby artists talking about live streams and looking forward to live streams coming back. 
I, I am really, uh, I'm excited to be back. I'm excited to be back with live streaming. Um, I know for myself personally, so Ashley, who is Gypsy Heart Crafts, one of my moderators, she's going to be starting to live stream. So between her, you know, those who were missing, uh, that used to attend the live streams uh, over that on Lisa's channel that Lock Refined Art would do. Yeah. If you've been missing live streams, Joseph's been doing them. Ashley's going to start doing them. I'm super excited about that because you guys are going to have such a blast in Ashley's live stream. Um, yeah, I'm a mod for her and a mod for Joseph. So it's always fun. It's just fun hanging out and it's so much fun having you guys here. So yes, I am getting, I am also getting back to live streaming and this should be a regular weekly thing now going forward. Okay, first let's get some swatches done and then I will show you what these can do. All right, so I'm just rinsing the sizing out of this brush. I have my little, of course, I have a little paint puck in my water well. And I will get to comments as well. See, I don't bring my just a second because my mouse has run away. There we go. I am delighted you're back. I am so happy that I am so I'm so glad to be back. Sorry guys, I'm just I forgot. I'm just gonna need my mouse. Oh, okay. We are there. Yes, weekly lives on YouTube. Okay, just looking to make sure there's no other questions that I've missed. Whatever I was just doing, leaning forward, that audio, whoa, was perfect. Um, yeah, I think, let me get this out of the way. How are, how are we now? It's really, really close. So hopefully I don't bump it and we are great. All right. Comments are good. Let's swatch. Let's get some swatching done. So hopefully you guys can see this pretty well. Right now, I'm in a weird transition the time, I'm sorry, I'm reaching right in front of you because I just need to my, get to my controls. I'm just trying to turn these lights up just a bit. If it's looking a little overexposed on your end, let me know. I'm just knocking these up a notch to make sure that you can see what we're doing. Ah, and Joseph is here. Thanks, Joseph. I, I gave you really short notice and I wasn't on my regular time. And, uh, you know, so I'm just happy that you're here. All right, so we have got the first color is the quinacrid quinac. All right, it's gonna it's gonna tie me up. Quinacridone magenta, and we're just gonna put down the way I like to do my swatches. I'm gonna turn this this way. Actually, you know what, guys? Why don't we show you? How about the new angle? What do you think? And that is definitely, let's just cut this back down. I had a feeling that that might be too much for that side. Okay. All right. So the way I like to do my swatches is usually I'll try to have, you know, the darker color and then let it fade, but these all kind of did their own little thing, but we're going to start with quinacridone magenta which this is also no quin i don't have quinacridone magenta so i have quinacridone rose i have quinacridone red in my daniel smith line if i don't put my hand in front of you guys and so now this is going to be quinacridone 
magenta. Ooh, this is a very nice color. And I definitely like to like wet the whole swatch area. And we'll just, ready? We're gonna just gonna drop some more of that color in there. Oh, wow. If these are going to spread this way, I can tell you right now, these are going to be fun. I can just picture like some, uh, like spontaneous landscape type. And I'm going to jump because just because I just did the red, I think we're also going to put down, I've got the pyro red light and that one is positioned right over here. So the pyro red light. All right. Wow. This is going to be fun. Ah, Javi Artist says, liking the new angle. And because I'm like right into this today, guys, I don't know. I'm going to try to pop your little, pop your comments up. Oh, wow. That, Okay. So note to self, we need to put the solid color first before we add water for it to move because these things move, which I was, you know, that was the whole reason I wanted to try these was because I was, I've seen them and uh, Gypsy Heart Crafts, the new angle looks so good. Thank you. And those whooshes. Oh my gosh. That one was like, wow. And this is still, hold on. This is still a little bit, there we go. So this angle, for whatever reason, this camera is being so sensitive. Things are changing. Things are changing. That's all I'm going to say. You're going to want to be around for this coming soon. It's going to, it's going to look a little different. Uh, so next I'm going to go over to my permanent alizarin crimson. Oh, so Gypsy Heart says, core moves like the Roadrunner. That's all I hear is like, meep, meep, zip, bang. Okay. So, here we go. We are going to look at some, making sure I have the right one here. Permanent Alizarin Crimson. That's what we're putting down here. And I'm just going to move this. Actually, let me, let's go back to overhead for now so you can see. Is the lighting all right? See, the cameras, like, they're just, literally, they are a foot from each other. And you see the difference. And they're both the same brand camera. And so, yeah, you see the difference, though, in the exposure. It's like, I can make one happy, and then the other gets a little upset. Hello, Jamie Eddie. Thank you for joining us. And I hope that because this is Starving Artist Collective, I hope I hope she gets to pop in because this was the one that she was wanting to see. And I know again, I put the I put it out on MeWe. Uh, look at how that moves. Look at how that. Oh, all right. I just want to like hurry up and get through the swatching. I'm gonna do this quickly, guys, because I I really want to play with these. I really want to play with these. All right, so next color I'm going to do, let's go over here to the, we're going to go to the Burnt Sienna. That's going to be our next color, Burnt Sienna. <clears throat> so I've got my, you see my water there, and I knew it was going to get dirty. I actually have my, uh, oh, and I didn't link that one, but I can afterwards. So my, oh, I'm sorry, Jamie, you know what? Look, it says Daniel Smith up here. Um, oh, I said in the beginning, my Daniel Smith palette that you guys have seen me use, actually the bottom row, I put my 12 core colors. So right here, which probably doesn't show up so great, these, this row is core. So right now we're actually um, swatching core watercolors. 
And yeah, I hope starving shows up. I see that that Joseph was just like starving. Where are you? Hopefully YouTube notifies her and she's able to jump on because she was so wanting to see these and starving. I apologize if you are missing this because it was not at my regularly, at the time I regularly go live. And so just recall, just, hold on a second guys. Apparently I cannot grab paint with my brush um, and talk at the same time. Well, I can, I can talk, but I can't hold a thought. So I'm going, I am going so outside the line. And you know what? I don't even care. I don't even care. These move. Wow, these move. All right. So yeah, I was not at my regular time. And that was just, okay, guys. So I've moved this closer and I, I removed the pop filter, which hopefully you're not getting any pops right now. And hopefully the audio is still fine. If it's getting too loud, just tell me I can move that slightly farther away. Okay. So I was really, I, I was determined I was going to go live today and I wasn't even sure if Joseph was going to see it. I'm like, all I can do is share on MeWe and it, I was trying to get the stream set up and things didn't want to go right and just trying to set everything up for you guys. And then finally I was like, you know what? It's not going to happen on our regular time, but darn it, I'm still doing it. So audio is still fine. Thank you, hobby artist. So yeah. All right. Quinacridone Gold Deep. That is where we're going next. Quinacridone Gold Deep. So yeah. Thank you, Ashley. <clears throat> if, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. If you do not already follow me on MeWe, that is a great place to follow me because I put all my announcements there and I, that's where I always update, you know, I'll be live in a half an hour. I usually put a post up about a half an hour before I go live. So if you follow me over on MeWe at Clark Fine Art, which yes, it is MeWe.com slash P slash Clark Fine Art. Now I feel like I'm an advertisement, but that is where I am. I always update there. Um, feels a little dry and you'll always get notified of course for anybody subscribed here you just ring that bell notification and YouTube should let you know when I'm live so while we're swatching these out can we talk about a few things um oh Jamie you're still not doing so great mm. I hope that that starts to improve and you start feeling better. So let's just talk about a few things. I am going to be bringing you a video soon <clears throat> with updates on my art boxes because, you know, I always share my art boxes with you guys. And usually my Tuesday videos that I would put out would be about an art subscription box. And... All right, I'm next I am going over to my yellow ochre. So yellow ochre is the color that I'm doing next. And I would put those videos out. Those were usually my Tuesday video. We would unbox an art box and then, you know, try out the supplies and see what we could do with it. And usually get a good laugh at, uh, you know, the chaos that could ensue. <clears throat> There's going to be a few changes with that. And of course, I will be bringing you a video soon talking all about it, sharing with you December and December and January because I did not get to share those with you yet. So we're going to look at the December and January boxes. I'm just going to do an unboxing and show you all the great contents. And then you can drop me comments in the chat and be able to tell me if, you know, which supplies you want to see me dive into first and actually and use um they're going to be oh look at that color oh so the yellow ochre I gotta tell you like look at how that blended out like this is so such a oh you can get such a nice pale these are these I, I'm telling right now I know these are going to be beautiful transparent colors that will layer I'm I am super I'm excited. We haven't even got into putting it on the paper and watching what it's going to do yet. 
and wet and wet. I am a huge fan. So that's what we're going to be. We're going to be looking at some of that. So now that we did yellow ochre, I'm going to go right over here to the nickel azo yellow. So we have nickel azo yellow. And I know my brain just went off on a tangent. I forgot what I was saying to you guys beforehand. Um, but we're talking about the art subscription box. Yes, that's what it was. Thank you. So with the art subscription boxes, you guys can just let me know if there's something that you want to see me try first that's in there. Um, spoiler alert. Uh, I want to say December was ridiculously redundant across the board. And if you follow any of those art boxes and have already seen people that have unboxed them, then you already know. I was like, wait, Nicolazzo Yellow and Yellow Ochre looked a little, little, little similar there. Let's, uh, let's jump back over here. See, they don't on that camera. You can actually see more of the difference. So anyhow, I don't think we missed much in... December as far as the contents, but I am going to show them to you. Of course, I will definitely show them to you. Nickel Azo is so gorgeous, says Gypsy Heart Crafts. And uh, I'm, I'm liking the color. I can't wait to see how this looks as we thin it. So now I've got this because my water is getting so red, which you guys can't see right now because I'm on different, the different camera. What I'm doing is I'm rinsing it out here, but then I'm coming over to my rinse well, which I'm not going to be able to keep this on screen the whole time because things are going to get bigger on here in a moment. But just grabbing my clean water from there. And let's see how this does. So what I'm doing is I put the water on the right side, and this is usually how I do my swatches. I'll put the water on the other side, and then as they connect, oh, wow. Oh, you weren't kidding. <gasps> Look at that color. Oh, oh, look at that color. You guys, okay, this is not doing, that That overhead, mm -mm, no, no, not doing it justice. So this nickel azo yellow, like higher concentrated, it has like that yellow ochre like feel to it. But then look how bright that is. Yeah, how bright that that is. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. Next, we are going to look at the Hansite Yellow Light. And oh, I, one thing I will say that I loved about this, I'm, I'm going to keep switching you guys back and forth here. So with the, from my Daniel Smith colors, you'll see here, I've got Pyro Scarlet. And then I have the pyro red light now in the core, which the Daniel Smith, and I, I think I need to go over this and give another layer because I had to pull some of that up because it was getting ready to explode. And, um, but I like that this is a shade lighter than this. So while they were similar, and yes, I know, I can just add more water to my Daniel Smith and I can get myself down to probably the same shade in the pyro red light however i can tell you just from these first swatches this is apples and oranges yeah they're both water well wait how would that be it would be like they're both apples be in the sense that they're both watercolors but that would be like this is a macintosh and this is a Cortland, or maybe vice versa because Cortlands are my favorite so i don't know which one's going to fall into that category but can you have two favorites? Um, I'm thinking that you can because you're going to like them for different reasons. And oh, I am super excited. Super excited. One, like, I was ridiculously blessed with the generosity of, sorry guys, Hansa Yellow Light. So with the generosity of Miss Ashley from Gypsy Heart Crafts because I shared with you guys in the December in my December uh, unboxing that I did live in January that sounded really tongue-tied in January I shared with you all the things I got in December how's that while we were live streaming and I showed you 
the liquid charcoal. Ooh, I'm sorry. My water just turned a beautiful orange. I showed you the liquid charcoal that she sent me, but in that same tin, cause I showed you guys the, uh, I don't think it's sitting in my cart right here. It's not, it's, it's too far away, but she also sent me in that same tin, these 12 half pans of this exact set to try. So when I got the set for Christmas, I thought wonderful because you know, there were some that, um, have less in them than others because just, you know, her own supply. Um, but still ridiculously generous to send me those and huge shout out to you. And thank you, Ashley, for your generosity, because it was definitely seeing these. I was like, Oh, I've got to get these. I have, these are at the top of my, I don't care what other, like I had Daniel Smith tubes of colors that I was so excited to get of Daniel Smith. And I was like, no, I told Lou, I'm like, if you're going to get me any, art supply, watercolor, what have you. I really want the core watercolors. I'm like, I've, I really want these. Cause I knew I just had a feeling, um, with what Ashley had sent, I was going to go through that really fast. Um, and I was just going to need some more. So yeah, that's why the tubes, when I just showed you at the beginning, looked pretty brand new and yet I have them in palettes. That's why. So yes, thank you to Ashley. I need to, uh, I need to get with her because she has not tried Daniel Smith. So I should get with her and send her a few pans of some Daniel Smith colors to try. So Ashley, you'll have to message me because you know what? I think that that would be great and I'd love to reciprocate. Okay, here we are. Viridian green. Ooh. Oh, that's pretty green. So the phthalo, so look at my Daniel Smith, the phthalo... I think I'm going to be going up and down with this light because here, can you guys see that better when I'm here and I'll, sh I'll just click it down when I go to the other camera. So the Viridian green is looking a lot like my phthalo green blue shade in my Daniel Smith. And I, I haven't looked at what the pigments are, so I would have to check that out to see, are they using the same pigments? Um, I'm going to check in with the comments in just a moment. How many of you have these? <clears throat> How many watching? I mean, we all, we know that Ashley has them. Um, and she's going to be my go-to. I'm sorry, Ashley, but you'll probably be getting messages from me like, hey, I tried this and how can I make this happen? Or yeah. So sorry, I may be messaging you in the near future. To harass you. I, I promise I won't harass you too much. Oh, just the way that these move. They definitely, it's definitely, this is a whole new, it's a whole new ball game. Okay. And Jamie says, those colors are so pretty. I, this is just their basic set. So this is, I'm going to grab it one more time. Oops. Just a second, guys. I hid it under. I hid it under the paper. Okay. So there you go, Jamie. This is just the introductory set. And 12 colors. But honestly, looking at these colors, ugh, what can't we mix with this? I mean, really, what can't we, wait till you see the blues. What can't we mix with this? All right. So next I'm going to go, we're going to go ultramarine. We're going to go phthalo. Look at the Payne's gray and we are swatched. And... So Gypsy Heartcraft says they really do have a learning curve on learning how to control core. And that is how you say it, folks. Q-O-R is actually pronounced core, like C-O-R-E. So it is core, and those are made by the Golden Paint Company. And that's why some people don't like them. They whoosh like crazy and drives people nuts. You see, and this, here's the thing. Like, I have been just itching to do some 
really spontaneous, <clears throat> like a spontaneous landscape or just spontaneous. Um, oh, yes, she's here. Starving Artist Collective is here. Thank goodness. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to the whooshes. That, that's, I'll just go there. And uh, you are welcome. Mm, it's always good to try and get a sample from someone if they have them to try out first. Yeah, you never know what art supply. So if you can test it first, it's better. I I agree. I agree 100%. And I was blessed with your generosity. And thank you again for it. Okay. All right. Stumbling in, exhausted. Pack, ooh, packing house to move. Oh, that would be exhausting. While doing 24-hour palliative care for my little dog. Oh, is he still not, do, not doing well? Hmm. Good to see pretty things for two hours. Yeah, whooshy core colors. See, woo, that's what I'm saying. Everybody was like, hey, they're, they're so whooshy. And uh, yes, let's get the big huzzah. Starving is here. <laughs> I was hoping, I was like, oh, please don't let her miss it. She's the one that was asked, kept asking about it. And I started late. So, you know, I'm, if I go a little bit beyond five, then that will be fine. And, you know, we're just going to do, we're just going to take it as it rolls because <clears throat> that's what we're doing. So ultra marine. And for those who might be watching the replay, I am going to, you know, I'm going to try to I'm keeping an eye on the comments, but if I can just answer somebody by glancing up, um, usually I like to put everybody's comment up there and recognize them because you're taking the time to talk to me and you deserve it. So, but I'm going to try to keep when I go to comments limited so that perhaps if you're watching the replay and you're like, well, I'm just not quite interested in all the comments and I want to get back to the pretty whooshes, then, you know, you'll be able to skip ahead. <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me so I'll warn you when I'm going up to the comments if it's going to be you know if I see stuff if you tag me at Clark Fine Art when you type your comment it does show up orange on my screen and oh wow did you see that take off that just took off and it's like and the pigment it's so not only again this is just a little swatch and there's probably was a lot of water there or there was a lot of pigment there so I'm just going to try to pull a little bit of this up or push it back. I'm just trying to push it back to the other side because I want to see how the light, how it looks when it's lighter. We'll see. But that, they move. Oh, they move. <clears throat> Excuse me. So next we have the Thalo Blue Green Shade. Thalo Blue Green Shade. I said, oh my gosh. So I was, I said, you know, I was on this mic. I was chatting the other day. Uh, it was a different app. And um, I do like every Friday morning at 10, I do live chats. Sometimes we go, you know, it can be anywhere from a half an hour to two hours. Just depends on who's there and how much we are gabbing and whatever the conversation is about. So it is not like, live with you know doing stuff like here but it's for my patrons and I do that on my discord server and what a blast we have been having and so um I'm sure that one of the mods has my information for patreon and of course it's right there it's uh you know if I can get it right here check that out for as little as three dollars that's the cost of a cup of coffee. And you know what? I feel that if you are spending your hard-earned money to buy me a cup of, cof cup of coffee once a month, well, then we can sit down once a week and chat. And, oh, we have some fun. But anyways, I was in, the point I was making was I was in a chat and I was using this mic and all of a sudden, like, I heard myself come over the mic and it was like, my voice sounded ridiculous ridiculously deep and uh just not like me and I was like wait a minute wait a minute guys this doesn't sound like this when I'm on live on YouTube right no it it was totally different it was confirmed no it's totally different and for whatever reason uh, and again it may be the way it, it's connected with my computer right now I need to go back to how it was where it was connected um 
yeah. So anyhow, yes. Hobby artist, uh, hobby artist said, 100% agree on trying a sample with art supplies. I did this with the Neo Color 2. Uh, got Zorn palette uh, colors and blue and swatched them during this live stream. Nice. So the Neo Color 2s. Okay, guys, can we talk about those for a quick second while I swatch this last color, which is Payne's Gray? So I did the Neo Color 2s. I showed them to you in an art box and gave you my opinions. And I'm, I won't rehash my opinions. They are, the video's clearly marked. You can go check that out if you would like to. Um, afterwards, after the stream, I could always come back and, uh, you know, pop a link, pop a link in up here or something for you to check that out. But anyhow, Neo Color 2s. And I was like, you know, I used them and I was like, well, they're, they were fun. Oh, please. Let's first just put that out there. They were fun. I had a good time using them, but I was like, I wonder if I will actually want to use them as much as I originally, because originally when I first was like, oh, I want to try these. I thought, oh, I would use those all the time. And then once I did try them, um, I was like, well, I don't know that I will use them as often as I thought. So maybe going full set wouldn't be the best idea. And then I had forgot I had had them on my Christmas wish list. And so I think I went in to take them off. But unbeknownst to me, my parents had already gotten me the set of 40 that I showed you last time. And so I was like, well, I have them now. <coughs> Excuse me. And. I'm kind of excited. At first I was like, oh, maybe I'll exchange them for, um, you know, a different supply that I really want um, that maybe I didn't get. And um, anyhow, I was thinking ink tents. But as you all know, I got gift cards. So I got those too. And those will be coming. But look at these colors. Guys. Look at these colors. Let's just get that up close. We'll just slowly go across. So these are your 12 on the bottom row. Are the 12 from your basic set. Look at that Payne's Gray. That just looks moody. That Payne's Gray looks like you could get a sky that would have some attitude with that. All right. Now, there's the swatches. If, uh, so Starving Artist Collective says, core paints are great mixers with paints that don't move so much. Ooh, see that? So I'm thinking maybe there's a few, uh, Daniel Smith colors that I have that don't take off and perhaps mixing the two of them. I'm going to be experimenting with that. I will definitely be experimenting with that. So Jamie says, I have two sets of the 10 of the Neo Color 2. I probably won't even use up the one set, let alone the second. Let me guess. Do you get the Palletful Packs box and the Art Snacks box? I'm going to guess that that is correct. And that's why you have two sets of those. Because yes, folks, I have another set to show you. But let me just say this about that. Um, and of course, I'll share that in that video when I do it. Um, again, because I already have a set, I'm going to use the set of 10 that I have already opened. I'm going to save the set of 10 that came on my other box. And that's going in the stash bin. And we're going to decide here. Are we going to, what am I going to do with the stash bin? I am either going to, a couple choices. We're going to hit a milestone on the channel and I'm going to create something that I'm going to give away. That is absolutely going to happen. And I think when uh, I hit the thousand subscribers and monetization happens, I am going to be using that stash box to send, um, you know, and I was thinking like one of my lucky, you know, subscribers, but no, I think I might do a couple, um, because I don't, I don't want it to be just one. And if I have some, some things, I want to send some things. So I'm really going to looking at doing that. So that's coming. So how fast does it happen? Well, that's up to uh, all of you that are watching that aren't subscribed and might like to please. And I'm just going to put this out there. Do not subscribe if you don't want to. 
it is okay. Maybe you're just here occasionally. You know what? That's okay. And, um, but if you do want to see the content that's coming and get notified, by all means, click it, ring the bell, and I will see you here. Um, we're, ah, see, starving got, okay, not quite. I ordered the Art Snacks box that had them because I wanted to try it. And then got my palette packs and that had them right after. Absolutely did. So we got Art Snacks had, I shared that one with you guys. That was in November. They had the Karen Dosh Neo Color 2. And it was, um, I was like, that's when I decided, I was like, yeah, maybe I should just take these off my list because I don't know that I want a big set of them. And, uh. So anyhow, I, I turned around and then I was like, I'll take them off my list. Again, just told you my parents, they had already bought them. So I got them. And then, yes, uh, they did not come the next month. They did not come in December, but January. So spoiler spoiler alert, when I show you the January palette pack box, they're going to be in there. <clears throat> and hopefully my January upgrade box has yet to find its way to my door so you know I think one of the pirates may have abducted it somewhere along the line all right let's talk about this but I'm excited about what's in that box it needs to come but there's lots of information about my art boxes I'm not going to go into that today because this is what we're here for I will however I will however have a video on that very soon it'll be a regular edited video so yeah that's coming. All right. <clears throat> and we have Okay, I was looking and disappeared. Starving about the 40 set. <clears throat> on an impulse don't even know why so have you tried them out starving have you tried them out do you like them I mean I know this is not about neo color too sorry for all of you who are like would you show me the core already it's coming do you do you like them I you know my thing was I was like I'm not gonna get fine detail with these so basically I have a set of water soluble crayons that uh, I could do backgrounds with and that's how I see them now feel free you go ahead for those watching the replay drop me a comment below tell me how you use them I love discussion I love to hear different ways that we can use them because you know what you might tell me something I didn't think of and now I almost said a bad word but I love neo color twos you know what I'm saying like I just think communication and 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 sharing of ideas with open minds is a is a positive thing and again a bad word almost slipped out my mouth I don't know what's going on lately I've been away for a little while folks I am sorry <laughs> oh my goodness okay don't okay starving says don't listen to her she's having a moment subscribe well you know that's just it like I never I never not anymore. I used to in the beginning. I'd be like, you know, like, subscribe, do all the things, ring the bells, whatever. And I don't, <clears throat> excuse me, I never ask you to subscribe anymore. And that's, you know, I ask you, hey, like, if you're, if you're getting value out of this, if you're liking this video, you know, click that, click that thumbs up, hit that like button. And we're about to look at cotton versus cellulose and what's going to happen. And yeah, we're going to turn this up just a notch. Bam. Okay. I know that my light is shifting outside, so I am going to have to be playing with this lighting situation. We know this is a problem, so you don't have to leave me a comment below if you're watching that replay. I know this is a problem, and I am actively pursuing it. So anyhow, you know, I don't, I don't say, hey, let's, um, I'm going to switch this up because this one was really dirty. And I am going to bring the Faber-Castell. And again, I did not link this one at the, this current moment, but it will be. I will rectify the situation when I'm done. Because in here, of course, I have, as always, a paint puck to keep my brush clean. 
I love guys. I, I, I'll sound like a broken record. I love paint puck. I love paint puck. Um, so in that set of the, cause they're also linked the silver black velvet brushes. We were just using the eight, the size eight to swatch. So <laughs> starving artist collective says, don't ask them to subscribe. I'll demand it for you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. But there's a reason that I don't ask anymore. And that reason, also in this set, this is random. Sorry, guys, I'm jumping. Size one script liner and the three quarter oval wash. So three quarter oval wash. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to use the size one so much. I do have my six handy if I feel that the eight is too big. But this is all. We're thinking abstract, we're thinking fun, we're just throwing color at this paper because I wanna see if I wet the cellulose paper and if I wet the cotton paper and then I drop in the colors, does it move more on cellulose? Does it move more on cotton? Does the paper matter? We're gonna find out. <clears throat> so, the reason that I don't ask for, excuse me, the subscribe is because sometimes somebody might be, you know, might have come around. It might be their first video. Um, they have not had any other experience with me. And, you know, I say, hey, hit that like button and subscribe and, you know, ring that bell notification if you want to be notified when my next videos come out. And some people will do that just because you asked them to. Um, the only problem with that is if they then realize, well, you know what? This channel's really not my cup of tea, which is okay. I mean, come on. I am wonderful, folks. You can't see my face today, but I am just heads tipped to the side and I am smiling and I'm wonderful. What's not to like? Anyhow. So they will come and, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's not their cup of tea. And again, that's okay. But now they're subscribed and they've rung the bell, which tells YouTube not only once but twice, hey, I really want to see this. And then if they don't watch because it wasn't their cup of tea and they don't, you know, click that unsubscribe button, then YouTube goes, oh, but wait, you're making content, but the people that are subscribed to you aren't actually wanting to watch that. So it kind of can hurt a channel, um, which is why I say I don't ask for the subscribe anymore. If you are getting value, if you want to see more, if you want those notifications, then by all means, I would love your subscription. I would value your subscription. And I am going to right now, because there's another piece of news I want to share with you. I'm trying to share news and keep this going. Here we go. Into some whooshes. So on this left side was the Canson XL. 140 pound, uh, 300 GSM. Canson XL is a cellulose paper. <clears throat> if, excuse me, if there are new, if, if you are new, if you are watching this and you are new to watercolor, right? I was new to watercolor a very short time ago. So I am bringing you along on my journey. And as I learn, I am sharing all of it with you. And if that interests you, then definitely click that subscribe button, ring that bell, do it. Smash that thumbs up. We're having a good time here. Drop me a comment. But shameless plugs. Um, uh, you want to talk more? Join me over on Patreon. I will be there tomorrow. Little as three dollars a month. Get me a cup of coffee and let's sit down and chat. Okay, commercial is over, folks. Um, when we look at cellulose paper, you hear cellulose paper. Well, what is that? Or you go, well, wait a minute. It doesn't say it's one hundred percent cotton. If it does not say 100% cotton, then it is a cellulose paper. Cellulose papers, right, made from trees. Cellulose, it's it's plant matter. And that's what makes up this paper. The B paper, that is the brand, B paper, 90 pound, 200 GSM. This is the thinnest watercolor paper I've ever worked with, but so many people raved about it <clears throat> that I was like, all right. Well, if we're going to be doing some wet washes and some whooshes, what better time than this time to give this one a try? And um, let me just say, if you are interested in watercolor paper, um, I am, I've got a video coming up 
that uh, I, I've got to film it here for you guys, but I have a video coming up that you are going to really like to see. Um, and that, that I don't, that I won't think will be in a live because I'm going to need to do lots of editing to be able to condense and things like that. But um, let's see just real quick. Cause I see my name in the comments. One second. All right. See, okay, see, Ashley feels the same way. I feel the same way. I have a pop-up in my videos, but I hate asking. Yeah, well, you know, when you put that pop-up there, it's just a reminder and it's great because it doesn't take up I just made your, I just made it pop up again. Um, it, it doesn't, you know, you're not taking up their time. You're not taking up your value, your valuable time and your time is valuable to me. And the fact that you want to be here and hang out with me is you humble me. You guys humble me all the time. Like, I just can't believe it. Um, yeah, I enjoy having you all here. So hobby artist collective said, I dealt with too many art supplies problem. I dealt with too many art supplies problem by going on exploring a uh, media journey several years ago. Tried not getting new materials until I used each medium enough to know if I liked it. That is such, that is sage advice right there. Because yes, and there's, it's coming. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into it today because we need on the whooshy whooshiness. And again, see Jamie bringing me right back to it. Thank you. Um, I agree with you hobby artist and yep. We'll talk about it. I tell you what, we will talk about it in my, when I do the art boxes, <clears throat> I, I agree with what you're saying there. All right, here we go. I'm going to take my oval wash and I am going to wet, and I just want to see which one can we see better. All right. So what I'm going to do is when we go to the whoosh, the dropping in to see how they move, I'm going to come to this camera right here so that you can really take a look at that. But for first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet this paper and I am going to give it a good, I want it to have a good soak. So this is the cellulose. All right. Plenty. Oh, I, I like this oval wash. This is like, oh, I like it. The way that the shape is, so the way that this shape is, when I just did that, getting the excess out. Okay, so coming across, right, flattens right out. Can make a nice wide stroke with this brush. And then, but I can also get in just a tiny bit, like the way that the angle here hits. I like it. And I'm gonna tell you, cellulose can we get let's let's see if it shows up i'm gonna blow some more light on this just for a second because i want is the water gonna show as i put this on the cotton okay it's like let me just suck that right up you know like think about it it's cotton it's 100 percent cotton what happened this is still got so this uh-uh going I'm going back this way all right you see the sheen look at how reflective our cellulose is that's reflecting the camera above it back towards you the B paper not as much um, but the edges of my cellulose are getting very can we see it in there I want to get it so you guys can see it all right right there these edges here, those are wanting to be dry. This is starting to pucker up. So this is my cellulose. My B paper, um, the cotton, again, also puckering. My water's staying more even on that. And that's just, wow. Okay, I like it. All right. So just making sure that I'm gonna have plenty of water. Because I want them to be, I mean, it's hard. It, this is subjective. I want them to feel like I've 
um, saturated them evenly so that we can see when we do a drop of color in here and a drop of color in here, where does it go? Right on. And I'm going to go, I'm going to start, I'm going to start with you guys overhead. So that when I put it, you can see it spread out. So is it, you guys, I'm hoping like if you're watching this on a big screen that you're getting a, like, a really good view of this. <clears throat> so, all right, drop me a comment. The 12 colors that we just, that we, that we just swatched. Bringing them back over. Of course, they're upside down, so you can't read them. Which one you want to see? First comment. I'm going to grab that color, and we're going to watch it go. What color do we want to drop in first? As we're just going to make some randomness here and see what happens. I want to see how they mix. I want to see how they whoosh, and I want to see how they differ from one paper to the next. Look how, like, that's such a purple, more purplish, the ultramarine. And of course, the phthalo blue is a green shade, so. Now I'm just waiting for a, somebody to throw out a color. Payne's gray. Love it. Ooh, Payne's gray. It's like smoky. It's moody. It is wonderful. All right. Payne's gray. There we go. I'm going to, what I'm doing is I'm going to take this up and I'm actually putting it out. You guys can't see my palette today and I apologize for that, but I'm bringing this out and I'm going to put it on my palette and I'm just going to get a bunch up here so that I can go quickly from one to the next. And can I ask, all right, for those of you who are watercolorists, let's talk about this, right? Here we sit. Oh, Hobby Artist said Thalo Blue Green Shade. All right, those are the two. We're going with them. Payne's Gray and Thalo Blue. We're going to use them both. So I've got the palette like this, right? And I find, especially when you're using a brush like this, you know, I hate feeling like I'm digging in that palette. I really think I want a palette that is... um. Where, where the wells are angled, you know, so you know how they have them like around, it's like a studio palette and the wells are angled. Really would like to get one like that. Okay, so I've got some up here on the palette. Here's our Payne's Gray and I'm going to end up talking. This will end up drying. Oh, I just water splashed there. Water splashes. Hold on. We're going to. I'll just go and I will re-wet both of these now that I just did that because I don't think that would be a fair comparison. Um, oh, I saw that, Jamie. I did. I saw that. I'll share that comment in, in just a second. Um, we're doing whooshes of sky blue and some yellow ochre sand. All right. Oh, I, I got you. All right. See where we're going with this. Um, so I need the phthalo blue green shade right next to my Payne's Gray here. I'm going to put that on the palette. Get that in there. And we will the slanted palettes with the studio palettes with the slanted wells. Yeah, I yeah, for traveling, which I do. I mean, if I go if I go anywhere, I bring this with me. It's funny because I'll bring it with me anytime we're going anywhere and I never have time to use it. And it's like, well, glad I, glad I brought that with me. All right. And we had one other color, the yellow ochre sand. All right. I see where you're going with this. Yellow ochre sand. All right. So I cleaned it out, grabbed some of my clean water, my water. For those of you who don't or haven't heard my new England come out, it does every now and then. Water. Got some water. We're doing some watercolors. Watercolors. All right. And I'm grabbing some yellow ochre. All right. I'm seeing lots of stuff with my name pop up there. So 
I will try to look at that as soon as I get these colors on this palette as I'm re-wetting those squares, okay? And that's the other thing, like you have this big old brush and these little tiny half pans. I thought about maybe going with uh, full pans and I thought, you know, even then, I just, I have one. I have a palette, I just need to fill it. So I have a couple of palettes. But I wanted to find out my best of the best of the best first. Okay, made me think of the Spaceballs movie. The best of the best of the best first. Okay. So gonna re-wet this one more time. Ooh, now look, I'll say that the cellulose paper, it has curved, but it's smooth. The B paper is lots of wrinkles. So I would say going forward, and those of you who have tried the B paper, um, weigh in. Uh, I would say that going forward, I would want to wet that paper <clears throat> and then tape it down, like soak that paper, then tape it down, let it dry so it's stretched. And uh, if I needed to tighten it up, and maybe that would leave me a nice flat surface. I mean, hey, we're going to see what we're going to, what we'll get with this. But this is very, this is a very bumpy surface. Okay, here we go. So our papers are wet. And we have phthalo blue green shade. Yes, I did grab phthalo blue green, uh, green shade. I have paint gray and I have the yellow ochre for Sand, we'll be putting that down at the bottom. Um, Jamie shared that information. They do have that. I did see that that was going on. Uh, we have Gypsy Heart Crafts says, these studio palettes with the slanted wells are perfect for studios. Those metal ones are better for traveling, but if you're rough like me, it can be hard on your brushes. Um, the These little ones are, I, so I, see, I mean, I absolutely adore my new brushes and I don't want to beat them up trying to jam them into little tiny wells of paint. So I'm really thinking you're going to start seeing a studio palette on this desk as we continue. Um, oh, Jamie says, uh Oh, here we go. You should get some Kuretake Gonzai, Gonzai, maybe Tambi paints Gonzai Tambi. I think that's the way I've heard it said before. The pans are large enough to fit that brush. Interesting. I will have to look at those. I will. Like, we don't think I have enough supplies. I just don't know. Um, okay. Tip. If you like pans, silver brush, black velvet, oval wash fits in the full pans without you feeling like you're digging in the pan. Fantastic. I thought about ordering some just to see because, you know, I love these. So far, I love these brushes. Um, I love those angled Holbein metal palettes. Expensive, but so lovely and easy to use. Excellent. Gypsy Heart Craft says, I got the Creative Mark Plastic Studio 40 Well palette from Jerry's. And honestly, it works really well. I was worried at first, but it's actually really good. It's only like 14 bucks. That's fantastic. And uh, is did you run into beading with that? Um did your colors beat up when you use them? And how big is it? That Those are my questions for you, Gypsy Heart Crafts. How big is it? Is it like a monster on the desk? And uh, do the colors beat up or they work really well? Ah, tweet, tweet. I will check it out. Uh, oh, all right, Steven. Tardy slip has been granted has been granted. Thank you for joining us. Glad you're here. You're about to see the whooshes. And the Gansai Tambi are really nice. They are Eastern watercolors and behave slightly different, but so nice. You know, I, at this point, I think every watercolor performs just slightly different. So yeah, huzzah. Okay, let's go. We are going with it. Our paper is wet yes it's still it's at that point where it's like um it's not look it doesn't look like the water's pooled it looks like uh it's almost it's almost matte it's almost matte 
All right, so here we go. First thing, Payne's Gray, which was our first one. We're going to drop it on the Canson, and then we're going to drop it on the B. And let's see where it goes. You ready? So here we go, Payne's Gray. We're going to take some of this, and, you know, we're just going to just going to drop it in here and see how far will it go. So there's our cellulose paper. And now let's watch it on cotton. Does cotton make a difference? We're going to find out. Look at the webbing there. Now I'll say that on my, and, and I'm going to try, I've got another one down here. We're going to try it a little differently. Um, and that way we're not going to do them like, we're not going to do this. I think I had a stray little hair wanting to come out of that. Happens. It's a brand new brush. It can happen. All right. So. Rinse that out. Next color we had was our blue, our Thalo Blue Green Shade. And we're going to drop some of this right in with our gray. Right? So we're just going to drop it in and see what is going to happen. I had a lot of water in that one. It was a lot of water in that one. Moody dropping in a little bit more Payne's Gray. All right. So you see there, it kind of like it's wanting to run down and kind of moving in some odd ways. But let's also, I don't know how they react. I have some salt here, my little tiki tiki man. So let's scrub a little. Does apparently my salt doesn't want to come out. There we go. Um, this is sea salt. It's not regular table salt. It is sea salt. I uh, just want to see what kind of effects do we get? Does it work? Have you tried? Have you tried salt in core colors? I don't know. Clearly, I haven't. It's the first time I'm using them. Tiki Tiki Man. Yes. My Tiki Tiki Man. He reminds me of, um, gosh, when I was a kid growing up and would go to Disney my grandparents would take me to Disney and we'd go into, uh, what was that the, the Tiki Tiki hut with all the birds would sing and stuff. Oh, I loved that place. I've always loved birds. Speaking of birds, I got a new bird for Christmas. And uh, he's just a little budgie. So darn cute. He's all blue. Actually, he's he's got... Um, he actually has some violet color. And it's like the light will hit him just right. And it just... Parts of him just look like it just flashes this violet. It's gorgeous. Um, I will have him. Eventually, I'll bring him up. Because usually, he'll just sit on his perch and just snack away. If I give him a little snack in his little cups, he'll sit on his perch and he'll just snack. Because he's his door's open and he kind of comes and goes as he pleases, um, you know, during the day. So again, I'm just like, just trying to see what are we going to get? What are we going to get? All right. I want to, I'm going to throw some more salt on here. A little bit more of that gray. which is now mixed with some of my blue, but you know, whatever. I'm just throwing color down, right? Throw it down. I want to see, does it move? Does it shift? Um, does it just blend all together on its own? What's it going to do? Does it like my salt? It's like, no, I'm on a low salt diet. I don't appreciate that. I don't know. I don't know. 
So I'm doing the same on the cotton paper just because I want to want to experiment. <laughs> Again, this is just first impression, right? First impression. I've never used these before. Um, the, uh, to the extent of me using these paints was when I received them, I did that so I could see what the colors actually looked like. And that was it. And I knew, I knew just with that swatch that I was going to love this. All right, so here we go with the yellow ochre. And we're just going to bring this in right here on the bottom, right? And if it blends up and it mixes, I don't mind. In fact, we can let it mix a little bit. And actually, I'm going to kind of cover this one. Just throw a few little... Throw a few little splatters in there. Why not? I've probably got myself and everything else splattered now, but, you know, that's okay. Oh, my gosh. Kitty glitter. Yes. I'm telling you. Kitty glitter. <laughs> so, for those who don't know, kitty glitter, it's, uh, you know, it's all the cat hair that they leave behind everywhere. I, I'm not a fan of cats. Cats and I don't get along, and that's okay. We have a mutual understanding that... We don't get along and they stay on their side of whatever space we end up being forced to be in simultaneously. And I'll stay on mine and that's fine. To all the cat lovers, kudos, right? Because, you know, cats eat birds and I'm, I'm a bird lover, so it's all good. But kitty glitter, their fur. Um, for those who haven't heard that before, that's like their cat fur, the stuff they leave everywhere. You know, I hear, I hear some talking about the cat left the cat hair and it's in their, it's in their paint and the cat wants to get up on there. I'm just splashing some water in here too. The cat gets up there and, oh, maybe we'll get a little up here also. The, um, this, this overwash will sling some stuff. JR, welcome. I did not see you come in. Oh, and look at that. I got it. Okay, sorry. I just see the comment. Um, I had a violet budgie I called Quido. Qu Guido? Quido? Q-U-I-D-O. Q and if I butchered it, my, my apologies to you. Turned out to be a girl and she had eight babies. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, mine is a male. <laughs> I can definitely tell you mine is a male. His seer is very much blue, and the seer is that little part above their beak. And fun facts for those who don't know, budgies, uh, when they mature, the seers change different colors. And so you can actually sex them by the way that they look. So, yeah. All right. Look at that. Look at this. Is, look at this one on the bee. I mean, I've got some pooling here. Because of the way it kind of rippled and then this and the salt is definitely taking shape. But I don't know about you guys, but I think I'm really liking this guy. I'm really liking that. I like both of them, but okay. So that's that one. And we're going to let it set for a few and let it kind of dry. But I'm going to move on to. Let's look at I was going to do another one here. I've got right, two more right here. But I also have a couple bigger pieces, but I don't know time-wise. I really didn't want to go beyond five. Thir well, normally we're five, and I know I was in a little bit late, but I'm going to save these. I'm going to save these two, which I have the B cotton versus, whoa. Let me just show them to you. So I have the B cotton paper here, and I have a sheet taped down. And these, this is a piece of chipboard case you guys want to like you see that that's like the back of the old pad of watercolor paper this same thing this is a, another you can actually see up here this is where the pad was attached I always save these they're wonderful for taping down your watercolor work so we have the Canson XL cellulose we have the B I'm going to be doing a much more in depth on this this is just my first impressions so we're gonna see these again and I have a new supply that I think is going to combine with these in a way that I am like so excited to do. So for now, in the interest of time, let's look at, I see my name, so I'll jump up there in a second. So let's look at, we're going to, 
be letting these dry, but we're going to do another one down here. I'm not going to use salt on these down here. I'm going to try a different technique. Um, and I'm going to use <clears throat> my glass dip pen. So I want to pick some earthy type colors and we're just going to go kind of willy nilly. And I'm going to do the cellulose first. And then I'm going to do a similar one on the cotton. Okay, and that's where we are. Teresa Mazzotti, hello and welcome. Hello. Um, let me just see. Fun fact, when I'm outside, I always know people are walking their dogs because you can hear their calls on the sidewalk. Yeah, you can. That is, that's, that's fact. Um... All right. Ugh, cat's eating the paintbrushes. No, 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 no. Oh, see, Jamie grew up with parakeets. I did too. My grandparents had a parakeet. His name was Sarge. He was the most amazing little thing I ever met, which is probably why I wanted um, birds as I got older. I've had birds many times. Uh, my son, Conyer, Tuker, a Tuker. Wow, if that didn't sound like from, from New England. Uh, my son, Conyer, Tuka, um, he, I, I would love to show you guys. I did get some footage of him and I want to put him in a video at one point because I think you guys would get a kick out of it. And, uh, I am so glad that you are here. And yeah, misspelled Jared is in the house. Hello, Jared. All right. <clears throat> Anyways, you would get a kick out of him. So I'm going to have to put the little clips I have of him in a video, but I can't have him in here because Tuka thinks that the world revolves around him and that if we're talking, we're talking to him. So he would hear me talking right now and he would start going off. And if he started going, I'm just going to wet this one. I'm not going to wet this one right away. So we're going to do the cellulose first. And I'm going again, I'm going to try to paint the same type of thing, dropping stuff in similarly on both pieces. And we are going to see how does it move? What do you guys, because I want to, I want to know what you guys think. So let, can I get this one? All right. Look at, look at that one. Can you, I've got to say, let me put this down. Oh, sorry for bumping the microphone. You see that one? Oh, I love the way that is looking. Oh, Teresa Mazzotti says, I got core paint for Christmas and I'm working on a hummingbird with them. I want to try them on Arsh and um, using Strathmore Mixed Media Board for the hummingbird. Nice. Share that over on MeWe. I want to see. I want to see. I'm like, look at me. I'm all excited. Okay. I'm trying. I'm going to. Oh, wait a minute. Is that going to be good enough? lower for me all right hopefully you will be able to see them i will move this board over slightly all right so this one's wet this is our cellulose now what we're gonna do is i'm just gonna think landscape so in thinking landscape i'm going to want my landscape colors i need to put my swatch card up here so i can see it all right so i'm thinking colors that we're seeing outside, right? Trees. I'm going to want some greens. And that is one thing that I'm not seeing here. I'm not seeing like the Viridian green, but I want like that evergreen. So I think I probably, I probably could mix it. Uh, okay. So Stephen, Stephen asked, is that on cellulose? Is that on cellulose? Right now, we're using both. We're comparing. How does it work on, let me go to overhead for you. The left side is the Canson XL 140-pound 300 GSM cellulose paper. So this side is cellulose. This side is the B 90-pound 200 GSM 100% cotton paper. So we're, we're not only look, getting our first impression of these core colors, but then we're looking at how do they react and move on cellulose versus cotton and what's the big difference so the answer is both 
But right now, let's watch over to this one. These, this one right here that I'm going to do, this is cellulose. Because you know what? When I first started in watercolor, I was like, well, what's the difference, right? Like, can I just get the cellulose paper and um, does it have to be cotton? And you know what? No, it doesn't have to be cotton. But having now used cotton, what a difference the cotton makes. And that's why I wanted to do it this way so that I could show you, um, yeah, there's definitely benefits to going cotton. Okay. So we're just going to start dropping in. I'm thinking, um, let's see, I'm going to go with some Viridian green over here and I can get that out of there. So I'm going with, and they seem to be re-wetting. So once they've dried in this, uh, palette, they seem to have dried very well. They also seem to be re-wetting very well. So there's that if anybody, you know, and that is very dark. Not what I wanted. I got too much. I love hummingbirds, Teresa. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do. You are, it's going to be mixed media with color pencil. Nice. So let's just discuss. I just wanted to put this out there because I know it's been hard and it's been hard for me to catch up with you guys and lots been going on. And you know what? I just want to put out that next week, I don't know. I am hoping that I will be live streaming and that we are now back and uh, I will see you regularly on Thursdays. That is my goal. I will see you on Thursdays and we will be exploring an art supply because good Lord knows I have got enough supplies here. All right. I've just mixed some of the Viridian green with a little bit of neutral tint, just to darken it up a touch. And we're going to just come in here. My paper now is, um, if you can, I don't know if you can catch the, it's got like a dull, it's a dull, it's a dull matte. And we're going to work on getting it so you can see that kind of stuff better. But all right, I'm just going to go, right? I'm going to be kind of random. I'm just going to pop stuff in here. Let's see where it spreads. Let's see what it does. Maybe we come in with a little bit of the uh, neutral tint and just put a little bit here and there. Just going to let it spread itself around. And I'm going to do the same, same kind of thing on this guy. So that I will try my best to replicate what I'm doing. And then we can see. All right. So that is some dirty water. There we go. Like, oh, I like it, guys. If, I wish you could have seen that one on the camera. Because I just used that well. And definitely clean water. Okay. We're going to go with. Ooh, let's grab some quinacridone. Um, the quinacridone gold deep. I'm going to grab some of that. We're going to drop some of that in here. So just see what we get. The only thing I have in mind right now is like, I don't know, maybe there's some trees. I have some kind of landscape. Let the colors just kind of mix and blend and do their thing. I just, wherever it speaks to me, that's where I'm throwing it. And then on the other side, when I do the other side, I will try to mimic what I just did here. Okay. And I'm going to grab a little bit of, this is the um, Thalo Blue Green Shade with just a touch of neutral tint in it. So just slightly darker. And I'm just going to drop it up here. Mm -hmm. Get a little bit of sky. And if I mix with some of these, I guess a little bit of brown co coming from it. Again, we're doing, you know, kind of like spontaneous landscape. We don't mind. We don't mind. Just letting it become what it wants to become. Yeah, the bee water paper. Um, 
it was because of Gypsy Heart Crafts that I tried the bee water paper. She, what did you do on it? You just, you did a project on it. And, um, are we seeing how that's moving? Like really seeing it? And I can also take this, right? So now if I want to, I just, I just put that burnt sienna in there. I can also grab, right? Like a dip pen. And I can sit here. Throw in some branches, maybe some grasses, and that's going to stick better. You see how da much darker that is? So much darker. I'll show you the overhead. You're not seeing it as much there, but... So when you use these like that and you scrape it in, it's darker. Now, if I use this tool and I scraped it in, and let me just show you because you know what? It should work. It should, in theory, also work on... The cotton paper. So I'm going to go overhead for a second. Just what I just did there, I scraped in a tree. So I'm going to like scrape in a tree here, which is going to be hard for me to see. But we're going to do our best. It might be a wonky tree, but that's all right. All right. So when we get over here, you'll see the difference. So I can use it once my color is down. Oh, look at how this one, look at how this one is just, those are, in, I, lo I'm, I love it. Okay. Switching back over to our side view here so you can see it when it lands in here. Now I'm going to take that. I want to mix up. See, that's the thing. Like I, the only thing about these colors that I'm, as I'm looking it's a basic set. So if I am going to want, you know, a dark green, I am going to have to make that dark green and mix my colors to do so. Uh, which, go for it. Um, you know, you sit there and think to yourself, okay, what colors make green? And then just grab what you need and play with it. And if it's not the right one, well, Add a little bit, add some more of something else and see how that's working out for you until you get that color that you're really looking for. Just experiment. It's all, that is what today is about. It is about experimenting with these. The liquid charcoal eagle. That is the one you did on the B paper. Oh, that was gorgeous. That was gorgeous. In fact, oh my gosh. Have you all seen that liquid charcoal that she is talking about that she did? Hold on. Because if I'm not mistaken. I did. Haha. -ha. I did win that. So I, I won that from Ashley. It's still in the sleeve because I don't want to mess that up. Oh, wait a minute. Overhead. Look at that. If you have not seen the video where Ashley creates this, amazing. Such a wonderful job. Look at the detail. Look at the detail on that eagle. I was just like, oh, look at the eye. Look at that eye. Beautiful. Beautiful. I highly recommend. Check it out. So, yes. And that was on the B paper. So, obviously, um... And that was liquid charcoal, correct? Ashley, that was the liquid charcoal? Pretty sure. Like maybe we have some back here, some trees that stick up. I don't know. Whose woods are these? I'm going to switch up right now. I got to clean this water. There we go. Ah, I like that. You guys are hearing that gurgle of it refilling. I definitely like that water well. I'm switching up and I am grabbing my round number eight. 
And this is like, look at the darkness that we have here. What if we just, can we pull that too? We can. Maybe it looks like some brush right here. And I'm just varying pressures. All right, maybe we have some grasses. Yeah, I don't know. This is, it could end up looking like, oh my gosh, have you guys seen the ones that Steve Mitchell does? Oh, to be able to do the spontaneous landscapes like that, he's like, and he just throws them all together and it's like, unreal. Unreal, Steve. Fantastic. Just kind of, just pulling out a little bit of separation here. Let that be up there. Just kind of separating so it looks like maybe this is a little bush here. And we'll come over here and we'll kind of, maybe we'll do the same thing. All right now it looks like we got some little grasses sticking up. Just giving some separation between some areas. All right. And what about quinacridone gold beet? We'll take a little bit of that. So on the cellulose, it's kind of like really, we're going to jump over here in a second. Um, I'm just going to give a few splats, right? I'm just going to give a little bit of texture. We'll see what that brings us. Could be wonderful. Could be like, wow, why did I do that? But you know, that's okay. How many of you do that? Like, How many of you just sit there and go, hmm, I wonder. And just let yourself explore it and just, what will it give me? Right? Get some just expressive strokes or, you know, what have you, and just throw that stuff in there and just be like, hmm, I wonder what it's going to give me. And that does not have enough water in it. Didn't have enough water to flow off my... I'm like, right now, I'm almost thinking like undersea coral. I don't know why that came up. I was thinking like outside. And now all of a sudden I'm thinking like, well, is this the ocean floor? And this is like, because look at the way the green went. And I'm like, ocean floor, maybe this is, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we're under the ocean. Let's go for it. But that was like the feeling I got when I just looked at this. I was like, wait a minute. That almost looks like I've got some, maybe some coral in. I don't know. I don't know. So I didn't use salt on this one because I wanted to do the, like, the scratching technique and show you that. Let me just check in with the chat really quick. And then we're going to do this one. And I will... <clears throat> talk to you about my upcoming schedule and then we'll probably be about done but I do want to show you well I, I can show it to you next time and that's fine oh these are they're not dry this is still very cool but look at the effects I mean the salt on the if we look at the way that the salt reacted on the cellulose look how much further it pushed whereas here on the cotton it just gave this like I really like this effect. Joseph singing under the sea. If you think that you're going to put that up like I did and get me to sing during my live, well, I've got gadgets and gizmos aplenty. 
no, we're not going there. No, you're not going to get me to do it. <laughs> okay, so let's get over to our B paper and try to do something similar. Now, remember, remember, I scratched this without there being anything on there. So that's going to show us what happens when we do that. And if you have not done it, if you have um, the calligrapher's pens, you know, the ones where you put the metal tips in them, if you have those, you can also use those the same way I used my dip pen. I have like many dip pens and then I have a lot of those too, because I wanted to show you guys, um, we'll, we'll do a, a dedicated video talking about different things that we can play with in watercolor that people might not otherwise think of and the ways that we can use them. All right, I'm gonna let that water soak in for a moment. I'm gonna double check the chat and we will try to duplicate something very similar to what we have over here. And then I have a little spritz bottle. And what I wanna see is this is almost there. It's not quite, it's kind of damp. After this gets a little bit more dry, I wanna give a little light spritz and I might actually versus a fine mist. <laughs> Give some of these, since we just said under the sea, this water bottle will give me a slightly larger droplet. And I want to put a couple droplets on here. Maybe they'll look like bubbles. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay. So we just scroll up because it's running away from me. And I'm, I'm just looking for orange because you guys have been talking and that is fantastic. I love that you all can sit here and carry on. Um, okay. Steven said, it seems that paper is the most important and the color and then the brush. So let me just add a little opinion and it's just mine. You can take it. You can leave it. It's fine. I won't get upset. So paper is the most important. I 100% agree. And then the color and then the brush. Um, yeah. The colors, like knowing how to use your colors, how they work. Like it is definitely, this was, we're doing this today because I definitely wanted to get my first taste, my first experience of core and see how do they move? Like everybody says, oh, they just whoosh and they travel. And I was like, that excites me. And I wanted to know. So that's what we're doing. So, and then the color and then the brush. But so yeah, I guess I, I do agree. I do agree with that because the brush was very important. I thought Prince and Neptune, oh my gosh, I need to get Prince and Neptune brushes. I will love them. Got a set. And I've got to tell you as of right now, because I probably because I haven't practiced with them enough because they're very soft and I don't like them. I like a brush that has some spring to it. This silver black velvet was like the perfect blend of soft brush with some spring. It was like, this is, this is the cool kid for me right now. I have some others that are like, I've got some Princeton snaps. Those are going to be a lot more snap. Um, and I have the mimic and I love those brushes too. And I can do a whole video on different kinds of watercolor brushes that I have, why I like them and whatever. That's not today. But this just seems to be the cool kid for me right now. This is the one that I absolutely love to use. So, but I, yeah, I would, I, I agree. I do agree with you that the paper is most important. And that's why I'm going to have a whole video coming out. Um, we need to talk about some stuff. We need to talk about some paper. All right. Oops, wait a minute. There was more. I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing my name. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. All right. I want to try out my Kalinsky. A Kalinsky Sable. See, that's going to be really soft too, like those Prince of Neptunes. I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. Uh, Clark Fine Art, uh, Gypsy Heartcraft says, the day my silver brush came 
And my oldest thought it was something for him from Amazon. And he cut into the, oh no. He cut into the envelope and snipped the tip halfway through and was like, this isn't mine. Oh. Oh. Yes, that's appropriate response. But that was like the good dead, right? It was like the dead that you come back from. It's not like the bad dead. Like the bad dead, that's the dead you just don't come back from. But the good dead, you can come back from that. It just hurts for a little while. So, did you get that brush replaced? And was the sun okay? <laughs> um, oh, my goodness. It was... it. It was, she said it was the large one, like the one that I'm using. Half the tip is cut. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, you know, <coughs> it is the tallest in the set. Yes. Uh, nope, never replaced it. Well, you know, you could just kind of, you know, just kind of give it a trim and it might be a little shorter, but still kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I would have cried. Teresa, I am with you. I would have cried too. And he's still alive. Well, that's a good thing. That is a good thing. He is, he is still alive because you know what? Hey, accidents happen. Mistakes happen. We have got to be, it, it's going to happen. Unfortunately, I mean, you don't want it. There's a, it's this, of course, I just opened this brush. You guys saw me just open this brush and a couple little tiny hairs, which I, just one thing I will say though, with my number six, I never saw a lot of, um, and tell me, people are probably going to be like watching the replay after and be like, you're putting way too much water on that. And you know what? Maybe I am. Maybe I am. Maybe I am oversaturating my paper. But you want to know what? When I oversaturate my paper, I don't mind watching that. I don't mind watching it take off like that. Look at that. I just... Yeah, let me see. I'm going to move this down a little bit more so we can get a closer look at this side now. How about that? You know? So, yeah, maybe I did. And I didn't, I did not let this dry long enough because I was being a wise guy and just threw it in there. You see how it's just kind of pushing. Um, no such thing as too much water. It all depends on the, uh, technique you're using right yeah like what's the worst that's gonna happen let me tell you something folks this is one piece of I cut this in half this was one piece of b paper and this could turn out to be oh the most gosh awful like why would you hold on to that piece of artwork okay that's fine that's fine I don't mind. I'm not going to cry over that because you know what? While I was creating the most god awful piece of artwork, you know what I discovered? I discovered whether that was too much water. I discovered whether no, that wasn't enough. And guess what? You're not like look at these. Look at the veining that's coming out here. You see that veining that's coming in through there? You know, I discovered that that happens. And guess what? I like it. So. Yeah. I'm just going to add some of the blue up here first before I bring all the other colors in because I know that when I bring the green in, it's just going to kind of blend. So I'm still trying to stay similar to what I did on the other side. I know they're going to be different. It's, you know, we won't paint the same thing twice. And what time we got? Okay. And again, I apologize for starting later than what everybody would normally have expected me to start. But the things, they happen. So my schedule may be a little crazy in the coming weeks um, for a little while. I suspect it will, it will be so. Oh, let me, I can show, I can't show you. Okay, so you ready? Let's see this in action. So the water's brown. I really want clean water. I'm doing this to make sure all the grooves in there. I've kind of loosened up anything that has settled. And this is what we do. Press the button. Down goes the water. And now more water, which 
there we go. More water fills back in. And now I have clean water again. And we can just carry right on. I'm, I love it. Love it. Do any of you guys have one of those? Love it. All right. I need some of the green. And we mixed up over here. <clears throat> yes, we did. So we're going to drop some of this in. I really, I'm just so curious to see. And I'm not seeing where my scratches were. So those of you who may have tried that before, can you tell me? Does it not work on the cotton paper? I thought it would. Because normally that will act as a resist. And maybe I just didn't press hard enough, which again, that could be. Um... Don't know. I grabbed my larger brush again, which I, I don't know. I don't know why or how I ended up with this one in my hand because I thought I was using the other one, but that's all right. That is one thing that I do love when you find a brush that like, like look at the point on that. It had that, that point. Oh, you guys are still overhead. I'm sorry. So, yeah. A brush toilet. That's it. Okay, so starving. Just said it. That is, that, yes. Yes. It's what it is. You flush it. It refills. Dog comes around. Gets a drink. Yep. Oh, yeah, I went there. I did just go there. Sorry if I offended anybody that gets easily queasy about dogs and where they might choose to drink from. Yeah. Um, push the paper up, working off camera slightly. Never mind, you just realized it. Thank you. <laughs> I did just realize it. Oh, oh, see, Teresa said they got one of those, and uh, I got one of those, and I got my daughter one, and we love it. Although she said it was like flushing a toilet. She is eight. That's funny. I love it. JR. Oh, no. Can't have that water, water bucket. That's for sure. A husband magnet. I'll get no work done. <laughs> okay. All right. For the bottom down here, we did the lighter. Oops, I clearly had a lot of stuff. So I'm going to throw some of this light down in here. And this time, if I don't, like I'm wondering, I don't really see. Yeah, my tree is just not... The tree I did is just not coming through. Oh, I need some more of that. I need some more of that. Wow. It just, it just touches the water and it explodes. I love this. I'm going to do some more with these paints. In fact, we will have another video. This, is, this was just, I wanted to bring you my first impressions, what I thought of them. Do I like them? You know, am I excited to create more and bring you more with them? Oh, hands down, I can tell you that is a hard yes, for sure. Absolutely for sure. Scratching technique works. Okay, see, I must have just not scratched hard enough. Don't drink that water. No, don't drink that water. <laughs> don't drink that water. Um, Yeah, I probably just didn't scratch it hard enough. And um, wait a little longer before you do it when the paper isn't saturated. Perfect. Oh, Teresa, thank you so much for joining us. It is great to have you here. Um, and those for anyone, um, have you found that watercolor pencils, graphitint, ink tents actually are better with cellulose paper or is it just me? I don't know. That's a great question because I just got in a lot of new watercolor uh, uh, cotton papers. So I would definitely have to use those a bit more and get back to you on that one, which I would be happy to do so. So, yeah, I said it earlier. If any, I don't know any of you that uh, might not have heard tomorrow, Friday, if you like the live chats, 
that's when I do my live chat with my patrons over on my Discord. It is not, um, you could be creating art while we chat. That's fine. It's usually like um, texting or sometimes we can talk. Uh, it's not, we're not visually seeing each other create art. It's just like, that's my basic for as little as $3. You can become a patron. Um, and that, you know, it's like buying me a cup of coffee. Spend $3. You bought me a cup of coffee for the month. Well, then we can hang out and chat and we do it once a week. So, you know, if that's something that you might be interested in. Of course, the link is, uh, right below me on the screen but also you can find it in the description and i'm sure that the mods have that information um because it's not i didn't do the way that the other one did i'm actually going to take and put in a little bit more I'm just going to splatter some of the green it really kind of felt like an underworld an underworld scene to me there. I am. I'm going to have paint everywhere. I can see it now. I will finish up after and be like. There's places that I didn't even know. Uh, and yeah. And in the, my live chats for patrons. Um, you know. We talk about all kinds of things. We talk about art. We talk about things that you want to know. Maybe. You're a creator and you have some questions about getting started and that kind of stuff. You know what? We've discussed that too. In fact, I've thought about making that a dedicated um, part of my Patreon, like its own little tier where people, because, you know, not everybody, some people are just here for the art, not because they too are creating. Um, so, yeah. I, re I recognize that and that's why I've thought about making it be you know something that's maybe separate but on the Friday chats we just talk about all we talk about our goals what's our goal for the week you know hey my goal was to get these core paints on some paper and have some fun with them all right so I've added in a few more we got a few more scratches in here all right and we're gonna we're going to take that and I'm just going to put a little bit more in so we kind of darken up kind of like this and we'll just see what it ends up looking. We'll leave it alone and we'll see what it comes back to. Again, I'm, you know what? That Payne's Gray, I am definitely here to say I just grabbed some Payne's Gray. That Payne's Gray is strong. A little bit, has some big muscles. Um, if you're using that like a neutral tint, for sure, that has some big muscles. And by big muscles, I mean, um, you don't need a lot. Like it's like, it's a lot of pigment, highly pigmented. I guess that would have been the better, the better way to say it. But that's all right. There we go. We're just going to throw some of that in there. Some of that over there. Oh, we had some little splatters up in here. Trying not to get it on our blue one that's above. So I'm sorry I'm blocking you for a moment. It's because I'm right-handed. Which is why the camera's on that side. Because I figured if I was right-handed, I would keep myself out of your way more often. All right, and then I put some blue down here. So the colors are a little different in this one versus this one. And that's all right. That's quite all right. Just drop a little bit. More. Ooh, that was very, that was very liquid. There was a lot of water. I have really beat this paper up. There is a lot of water on this paper. You see that pooled there. I'm actually going to get some of this out of my brush. Because that was, was a little excess. There we go. All right. 
Now I'm going to come back with the little splats like I did over on the on uh, this side here. And my brush does not want to does not want to let them go. I'm probably like it's probably going everywhere but me. I'm going to grab my other brush. Everywhere but me. It's probably going everywhere but on the painting that I want it on. This is definitely a learning curve. If that's what I'm kind of just looked up real quick. If that's what you guys are talking about. It's definitely a learning curve. And thank you so much for joining me on this exploration. Because, you know, come along on my journey. That's what, that's what I'm kind of getting my focus to. Like, I want to take you guys have seen how many products have come into this studio i want to take those products i want to pull them out i want to show you what we can do with them you know hey throw some salt on that piece i'll throw some salt on that piece you know what i mean i want to I want to do it together definitely want to do it together and just what can we do and that was i just grabbed some phthalo blue and just few drop dabs of that in there and then I am going to go back because remember I said I wanted to do the um I said I wanted to do the water there we go oh nice okay I'm leaving it alone leave it alone no one to stop so this is really abstract and I again I was thinking landscape and then all of a sudden I was like oh hey wait look at the color of that green maybe that's water and this water is terrible so wash her down again the only thing I don't like about this yeah there's there there's I can see many ways like the engineering side of my brain is like oh this could be so improved if we just did this but one thing I'm missing today is I don't have my paint puck I don't have my regular paint puck well that I normally hang all my brushes upside down on, but it's fine. Okay. Now I'm going to let this one dry for a few moments and I'm going to go to the overhead and I'm going to let that one dry for a few minutes because I want to see, let me get this out of the way. So we put the salt up here, but this time I want to do, and I'm going to cover up. I'm going to kind of just, just gently so I don't want to suck up the water but I want to let me cover these as well because I just want okay I just want little this gives me bigger drops and I wanted to put something I think I got a little too much there we're just going to dab it I wanted to see with some drops on there yeah, I see them now. What's going to happen? How's he going to move it? How's he going to push it? I don't know. Don't know. And I'll watch. And if something starts to get a little too crazy, I can I can always dab it. Like if one bubble was a little too big, let's uh, let's switch over. I'm going to move this and so I can back this up for you. So that you can have a better look at it. How's that? Do I need to turn this slightly? Oops. All right. Okay. So I'm looking at some areas where there's like, there were a few big spots. Now, if I, when I'm doing my watercolor, if I get um, an area where it starts to push the watercolor, the watercolor is just being pushed away and I go, okay, that's it. I want that, but I don't want to leave a hard edge. Sometimes I'll just come in and I'll dab and take some of that excess away so it doesn't have more water to continue, you know, to continue pushing. And I just want to see, will that do it? Now that was dry for a while. So is it going to have as much of an effect? I don't know. What will it do on this guy? And I just want to make sure it's, see, it's looking like it's coming out too. <clears throat> there we go. All right. Let's give her a go. Yeah, because I was thinking 
I'm thinking like drops, like bubbles, if this was under the sea. And there you go. You can see it starting. You see the circles? So on the cellulose, in its defense, I will defend it here because we did let that dry a bit. Uh, it would take longer and the circles would be harsher. So this kind of makes me think of a, yeah, just kind of makes me think of an under the sea. Let's go above. Boom. Okay, so I wasn't on camera at all today, guys, and we kind of went from one angle to the other, trying to give you close-ups, let you really get a good look at these and see. I hope that you enjoyed that experience with the cameras. Um, you know, drop me a comment and let me know. Like I said, normally I'm in the corner, but I didn't even want to be, I didn't even want to be in the corner today um, because I wanted this to absolutely be our focus. Um, I loved, loved, I love the way they whoosh. I love the way that they move. And the other thing too that we could have done, <clears throat> yes, I squirted water, but you know what? I could easily have just gone like this with my, it's gonna be too much on that. I could easily have taken my brush and this is the, this is my, my size eight. And I could have just dabbed it. Right. I could have just dabbed instead of randomly, instead of letting the spray. Now the spray is going to be a lot more random. The spray is going to be more organic, but then at the same time, I could have done it this way too. Okay. So you don't have the little sprayer or you don't have one that works. I will take it in my hand and I will tap so I can feel the size of the drops that are going to come off. So with the brush, cause that takes practice. Um, and I could just tap and I go, okay, that's pretty good. That's the kind of water drops I want. And I would just sit there and I'll tap over it and let those drops get on there. You want bigger drops, more water, fewer drops, less water or finer drops. I should say less water. So just, I don't know if you guys heard that. My stomach all of a sudden was like, feed me. Oh my gosh. Yeah, let's just, uh, I see it on there. Let's just give it time and see if it will do its thing because that's my other question. Oh, I'm going to show you one more trick, one more, before we, before we run away because I got it out. How many of you have used your Magic Racer? Since these were my first impressions, <clears throat> not only did I want first impression, I wanted, uh, Ronna McMahon. Hello. I did not see you when you came in. If you have just arrived. Thank you. Joseph says my stomach yells through every stream. That's funny. And I hope I'm not missing anybody's comment because I did not see any orange saying, you know, at Clark fine art. So hopefully not. If I did drop it in the comments again right now, and I will check in a moment. So what I did was I just took my scissors. <clears throat> I took, this is like a, a magic eraser. Mr. Clean makes them, but this is just a cheap one I got at the dollar store, like the Dollar Tree. A pack of four, I think, for a buck. Something like that. Uh, I just cut off a piece of it. Um, and now, uh, if any of you have seen these before, do you know what these are? Have you not seen these before? Are they a mystery? They usually they come in a little pouch like this. These are eraser guards. So let's say that I wanted to do, maybe there's a moon. Maybe I'm thinking, hey, there's a moon back here. And I want to put that circle in there. Or I don't know. Do I want to do something in here? Do I want to do I'm just thinking like this area. What do you guys think? Eraser shields. Absolutely. Yes. Starving artists. That is what they are. They're eraser shields. So and what happens is you can take your eraser and erase just specific shapes. So, yeah. Um, put down slightly. Put down slightly. What am I putting down slightly? I'm not sure. So anyhow, um, she'll tell me in a second and it'll catch up. I'm cutting this in half again because I just want a small piece. So what you can do is 
you can take, and usually it's like when it's dry and this has a lot of salt, I'm just going to kind of brush the salt off this area. Okay. And brush the salt off. Actually, we have a lot of white over here. Maybe we'll do it right here. I just want to show you with one. So I'm going to take the largest circle. I, that's what I want today. So I'm taking the largest circle. I'm going to set it where I want it. And so you see that right there. And this is why I wanted to test it out because I want to know, <clears throat> excuse me, do core colors lift? Do they lift? Do they stain? Do they, what's it going to be? Uh, the top, the top of the top section you were pointing are off camera slide. Pull it down. Pull it down. There you go. Okay. All right. So over in here, I'm going to take this. And I'm going to set it where I want it. And I'm choosing this because there's a dark area right here. And I want to know, can I lift these core colors? So I'm going to set that there. My magic eraser. Now I dipped it in my water. I have wrung it out. I am squeezing this. I do. It's not dripping. It's no water coming out. Okay. But it's wet. And now I'm going to come back over here. I can manipulate it to this circle. And I'm just going to kind of go around in a circle. Right? Right there. See that? Boom. White of the paper. What do you think? What do you think? I love it. Um, so you, if you needed, you know, if you needed a straight line, if you needed a little tiny dot, um, if, you, you know, maybe I need a little smile. I, I don't, whatever you need. You've got these little shapes that you can use and create with. And if you make a mistake, I mean, that was, how simple was that? Look, you saw how dark that was. And that was pretty white. Now that was on. Let's be fair. Let's do this. Let's, let's really, if we're going to test this, let's test it. So this was on the cellulose paper lifted. No problem. What about the cotton paper? Will the cotton paper lift? Where should we put it? Should we go like over here? Like right here? And then it's kind of bright coming off of it like that. Huh? I don't know. Let's try that. I'm going to try. I think I'm going to try it there because he, oh, well actually right here though, if it was right here, court don't normally. Okay. Let's, let's, let's throw that up there because that's very interesting. Core don't normally lift easily. Um, the Aquazole, uh, binder. What is a magic eraser? Is it abrasive? Okay, so here is, um, I'll have to see. You've never heard of the magic eraser starving. I'm just going to have to like drop one in a mailer and send it to you because they're magic. It will take a long time to get to you. That still, magic does not affect that. Um, so basically they're like a foam. So it's a type of foam, uh, almost like a sponge. Um, I don't have the box here. I apologize because the box will probably tell me what it's made of. Uh, but you want to talk lift and I don't have to scrub hard. You do not have to scrub hard to get it to work. Let's look at it on the cotton paper. I'm going to actually put it right here because look, I have blue. I have some blue. I have some black. And I think maybe that'll give us like a little moody area. So again, I am wetting the magic eraser. I am squeezing that out. You could try to lift the dried swatch card that you made with the little ones I sent you. They've been down a long time. You know what? Let's, all right, I'll do it. You guys want me to do it? I'll do it. All right. So in this swatch, I have some of the, I have some of the Payne's gray. I definitely have some of the blue and let's see if we can get this to lift. That was the, um, was that the phthalo blue green shade or phthalo blue? or the ultramarine in the top part. I think it was, we were still phthalo blue green shade. So let's just, let's just go in and see what are we going to get? And I'm not pressing hard. I'm just going in circles. I am not pressing like, yes, I'm making contact with the paper. Uh, I'm just do, rinsing it again. You can see it's pretty white. 
I'm just rinsing it again, making sure I'm getting any color that's in there out. Squeeze it out. It's dry. It's not dripping. I'm not going to drip water over the rest of my painting when I get in here. And there we go. You ready? There's your circle. Look at that. I'll bring it up closer so you guys can see it. See those? Lifted right off. Erased it. Huh? Yes. Awesome. All right. So now, uh, yeah, Ashley had a good point. So I did these. I swatched these in, <clears throat> gosh, Ashley, that was like December, right? That was December you sent this to me. And I swatched this back in December. Let's see if it works. I'm going to move this board so that these can dry and we will come back to them. Because how cool would it be like, guys, now that you've seen that, what's to stop me from coming in here with these circles, erasing a couple little bubbles, right? Now they're clear and then just kind of paint it on. Yeah, Mr. Clean, Gypsy Heartcraft says Mr. Clean. Yeah, that is the brand name, Mr. Clean. Um, but you get them at the, uh, you can get them generic too. So, you know, I could come in here with bubbles and erase bubbles and it would look like bubbles floating up in the water and then come back and put the color, you know, in the bubble the way that I would want it to look to be a bubble. So you could do that. <clears throat> but, all right, we will take, let's do a line because we can erase a line right through, through them, right? That'll tell us. I'm going to turn this board around just for a moment so we can work on this side. Uh, use the side, use the side cam. All right. I'm just turning. Let's go to the side cam. Okay. See where I need to be to show this to you. I'm going to do. And you see, like, I just have a little piece like this will, they, these will break, these will break down. Um, they will, they will break down and you will have to toss them and, um, but okay. My core users out there, what is one of your higher staining? Which one is one of your higher staining colors? Let's call it. And I will put a line through it and we'll see if it's going to take it clean. Throw one out there. I heard that Schmanka don't work well. I'm not sure what that is pertaining to. Uh, that way we can see exactly how you're touching the paper with the eraser. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, look, we're just going to go through. And here's a long line. We have phthalo blue, green shade. We have ultramarine blue. We've got viridian green, burnt sienna. I think if I use the long one, I can cover... Does the other one have a longer one? Hold on. Okay, there we go. I can cover from all the way to burnt sienna. All right, are you ready? So I'm going in this one right here. Let me make sure that that's going to be where you have a good view of it. All right, good. So I'm going to get myself some water. This is clean water. Squeeze that out. And now, here we go. Viridian is right here. So, JR, Viridian's going to be right here. So, as I, hold on a second, guys. I had water on my finger and I just don't want anything messing us up. All right, here we go. One, and I'm just turning it. Cause I'm doing a color and then I'm turning it. This is cutting the, because it's the straight one. Um, it's cutting into the eraser a little bit. I might have to grab the other one. I've used this one a few times already. So that is possible. That is possible. Let me grab the other half. So getting it wet, wringing it out. Could be that this one was just um this track was just sharp too 
I don't know. And this was not watercolor paper, guys. So that's that's kind of hard to like if it's if it messes up the paper, which I'm not sure, but if it messed up the paper, that wouldn't be a fair evalu evaluation because this is a very it's only cardstock that this is on. But when we talk about lifting, how's that? How's that? That's a magic eraser. You want to see Payne's gray? So I'm going to do, I'm going to grab this other one. Payne's gray, yellow ochre. Right? I'm going to go over these two right here. Um, my hand's in your way. Okay. Payne's gray, yellow, Payne's gray, yellow ochre. I am turning it. There was a lot of Payne's Gray right there, I'll tell you that. Because as soon as I hit it with water, it was like, wanted to just explode. So I'm just turning. I'm just rotating the sponge to a clean spot. Okay. Payne's Gray, yellow ochre. Here we go. And there's a little bit of Payne's Gray that's transferred here because it was, um, like I said, there was a lot of Payne's Gray there. So the color just kind of exploded at first. But look at look at how it lifted through that dark of the Payne's Gray. These things are awesome. If you don't have them, you need them. I don't have them linked in the description below. You know what? I will. I will do that right after the stream because super easy. And I'm sure I can find the, like, really super inexpensive generic form like what I use. So I will definitely link those. Um, I don't know if these reds are, are more staining colors in the core. Are they? Well, that's a, that's a really big line, which I mean, I could do the big line. It wouldn't matter. All right, guys, last, the last one, and we will get wrapped up. I feel like this was like the highlight of the show. It wasn't like the whooshes. It was the it was the magic eraser. You guys did not know this. If you did not know this, then yay! I'm I'm glad that uh, I decided to share that with you. Because how many times, like you're doing a watercolor painting, you're like, oh no, I made a mistake. Like sometimes you can get that off. You just take that magic eraser and disappear. Okay. Ah, it was scrubbing up some of my, my liner, but oops, I'm not even where you can guys can see it, but there you go. The color's gone. You see some gray in there. That's from my, that's from my, the pen that was used to write the colors down, but pulled it out. You're out here blowing people's minds. Well, I have not read the chat, so let me, I am going to get caught up with the chat real quick now before we say our goodbyes. Um, next Thursday, it is going to be my intention to be here next Thursday. Um, I am hoping that I can start at three o'clock. I have, I have a few ideas. I have a few ideas of what I would like to do. We are going to definitely be using more supplies that we've seen. Look at the, look at how these just came out. And like that water, it just kind of has this like ripply effect. Let's go above. Can you see? So, oh, and I'm still, I am, I'm, I think this one is my favorite. I think that one's my favorite. Well, this one's kind of like, I don't know. What do you see? What do you see here? I'm like, oh, it's the moon. Are they like little ghosties or something? I don't even know. I don't even know. And then, oops, sorry if I'm bumping the cameras. Bump. Look at, look at that. Look, it just kind of, it looks moody. It like, I, I like it. I like them both. And there we are with that one. So cellulose paper, water, um, cotton paper. Specifically, we tried the B. Okay. Ooh, snowflake. Oh, Steven. 
Oh, a snowflake. We will do that. It's supposed to snow tonight. We're supposed to get another 12 inches of snow tonight. We got 12 inches of snow last week. So it has been snowstorm on top of snowstorm. But, you know, that's Maine. That's where I live. And um, it's okay. So you see here, cellulose paper, cotton paper. Look at the difference. Look at the difference in how they reacted with salt. So look at the difference on on cellulose versus cotton. Um, I, I'm going to check the chat real fast because I do see I do see orange. And I don't want to miss anybody. So let me just scroll up real quick. <clears throat> okay, got that. All right. I will read all of your comments, like your chats in between each other. Right now, I'm only looking for things that say at Clark Fine Art because that's orange. Helps me find it faster. Um, we did that. Okay. So, exactly how you're touching the paper with the eraser. Yeah, basically, you're just putting it right on top of that eraser guard and you're just rubbing it across the top of the eraser guard. You don't have to scrub hard. You do not have to scrub hard. You just have to make sure it goes into the guard, of course. Um, okay. Staining color, phthalo blue. Well, phthalo blue, Staining color. Let's look at that. That was the lift on the phthalo blue. And I tried to stick close to the higher pigmented sides. So there you go. I mean, there's the quinacridone magenta. And you see how it took out the Q. So that's where I'm getting some gray in this because it grabbed that and it was pulling the gray through. But Viridian, look how clean Viridian came. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, I'm going to definitely be using that a lot more in some different techniques. Let me make sure that I'm all the way down in the chat. Um, brands important. Oh, yeah. Well, so, okay, so we were talking, you guys were talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, the pills that you saw. Um, that pilling was the eraser, not the paper. And I thought I just brushed them off together. Don't know where I put them. Probably, I don't, yeah, over here. Um, so let me just show you. She's right. So this here, these little, these little pieces are, this one will probably give it. Um, oh, no, this one actually has some on it. So I can ring this out and show it to you. On on an eraser like this, don't drip water on the paper. You see, there, you see them on the edges here? You see the little balls? This will start to break down. Um, the more you use it, the more you rub it. It will start to break down and it will just, little parts will kind of break off. You just brush them away. Um, that's why, that's why I cut just a small piece, just cut about what I needed, um, from the eraser. And that was a full size one that you saw me start with. And, you know, I cut two sections out of this and you can cut, you know, cut them skinny, cut them, cut them, you know, cut them this way and make them even skinnier. But those work great. And you don't have to use, you don't have to use them just through something like this. Grab a stencil. Can you imagine what you could do with a stencil? Just saying. We might be seeing some stuff like that coming soon. So just saying. Yes. Um, magic erasers are great tools for watercolor. You do not need to have a, an eraser guard. If you don't have one, you don't need one. You want to erase holes? Take a hole punch. Punch a hole in a piece of, you know, punch a hole in a piece of cardboard. Punch a hole in a piece of hard plastic uh, and make yourself one. And then there you go. And you have something you can erase with. No problem. Quinacridone gold. The Quin gold. There was, I'm, I'm just catching up on the thing. Quin gold right there. It's gone. Took it out. Quin gold stains. Well, it does, but we only see the gray that was left behind by it reaching the G in gold. The rest of it. She's gone. 
So, yeah. <clears throat> Fun facts for the day. Magic erasers. You guys didn't know. You did not know. That'd be the supply I'd be showing you that you're like, I've got to get that. I need one now. <laughs> Watercolor erasers, which are magic erasers. Oh, so Jerry's. Okay. So Jerry's product that is called watercolor erasers. Blick probably has one too then. Um, but guys, why pay more? Why pay more? You can get these things at your, if you're in the States. Um, I don't know how the dollar type stores work elsewhere, but I know if you're in the States, Dollar Tree has them. You're going to pay a buck or what, a buck and a quarter now for four of them for a dollar. Yeah. Uh, Aqua Elite Lift or Easy Lift. Okay. Blown people's minds. Well, you know, good. That's a great. If I'm, if I am super excited that I have shown you something that you might not otherwise have known. That's fantastic. And I'm just thinking, like, Stephen said snowflake, and I'm just like, oh, snowflake would be so cool. Um, okay. Uh, Superb stream. Oh, have a great rest of your day, Stephen. If you are still here, I hope you're hearing me. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Oh, and can I just give a huge shout out? Because uh, Rana uh, says, bye. I will talk to you soon. I hope to see you guys in the next stream. I really hope to see you guys in the next stream. So let me just tell you, kudos to all of you who have subscribed. And the people that are here, I know you're subscribers because you're here supporting me. And I thank you. And I just have to say congratulations to you guys because you have unlocked the community tab for our channel on, on YouTube. And I am, I am just, I am super excited. And I say congratulations to you because that's not, that, that is not my achievement. I have zero control over that. I cannot unlock the community tab. I can create posts to share with you, all of my subscribers, through my community tab, but I cannot unlock it. And you guys just unlocked my community tab. We just went over 500 subscribers. So yes, I am on MeWe and I post things there, but now you're going to see things just for you guys coming into YouTube community tab for my subscribers. And uh, all I can say is I am humbled and thank you. <sighs> guys, I'm going to be saying that. We'll be 500. We'll be 1,000. It's still, it's humbling. And I appreciate, I appreciate each and every one of you who chose to Come along on my journey. It's going to be a fun ride. We're going to do some crazy stuff. This year is about to bring some crazy stuff. So be stay tuning because the next few, uh, the next, the next few videos, you're going to want to be around because some stuff's happening. I wasn't missing for January for nothing. Just saying. Hint, hint. You know, subscribe. Check it out. I'm going to try to be live Thursday at three and uh, next week. And I'm really going to be trying to get a regular edited video out. That may not happen this week because what's been keeping me busy is still a little ongoing. But I can tell you that after that, once you see that Tuesday video, you can rest assured it may not always be on Tuesday, but you're going to get an edited video and you're going to get a live stream from me. And we are going to be rocking a regular normal schedule. And I've got some exciting plans for this journey. And I hope you guys have a blast coming along. So thanks for today. Drop a comment afterwards. Pop over in the comment and let in the comments and let me know. Okay? Because if you're still and if you're watching this on the replay and you're still here, thank you so much. Drop me a comment. Cellulose paper, cotton paper. Which which creations? Which creations were your favorite? So this is cotton with the blues. There's the cotton with the greens and oranges. Now let's look at our cellulose with the blues. And there we have our cellulose with the greens and oranges. Put them back down there so you can see all four of them. Drop me a comment and let, let me know. And oh, by the way, 
I showed you my silver black velvet brushes. I showed you the new rinse well. I showed you the core watercolors, right? I showed you a new magic trick. Draw me a comment. What was your favorite? What was your favorite thing you saw today? And what do you think? Cellulose or cotton? Did it make a difference? Let me know what you let let me know what your thoughts are. All right, everybody, I am out of here. Goodbye. I see all the goodbyes coming in. Thank you so much. Please take a moment. Thank you to the moderators, Ashley of Gypsy Heart Crafts and Joseph of The Art of Joseph Fincham. Thank you both. Uh, please check out their channels. Their links are in the description below. Joseph's live streaming. Ashley's live streaming very soon. So if you're missing live streams, stick around. Come on back. Follow me on MeWe. Keep an eye on the community tab and I'll see you guys real soon. Bye-bye.